a healthy population. Experts agree it is the foundation of a society's economic and political stability. Yet despite monumental advances in medicine over the past few decades, there are still nations around the world facing serious challenges as they try to achieve just that. We're pretty fortunate in the United States. We have a very well-developed uh, health care system. But if you look at the rest of the world, there's six billion people in the world, and most of that six billion do not have access to Western care medicine. The population continues to grow. We cannot possibly educate enough doctors in order to take care of that population in the, in the foreseeable future. As with any population, a certain statistical percentage of people will have um, quite complicated challenges. And really, our healthcare system isn't geared towards addressing those complicated challenges. Making these challenges even harder to overcome is how quickly disease can spread around the world. As people move freely from country to country, so does the risk of spreading infection. While in countries like Belize or other third world countries, which are even worse, they don't even have the basics. They don't even have immunizations, sanitation, clean water. So it's a multifaceted effect that is beyond just healthcare, but I mean, it goes on to those things that support a good healthcare system. Maintaining access to high quality services is a constantly challenging situation. Many of the villages in the, south, in the south of Belize, for example, will have maybe just a few hundred people. But they may be hours or sometimes as much as a day away from the nearest clinic or the nearest hospital. Because health is a global problem, humanitarian organizations have taken an active role in providing impoverished areas with the knowledge and assistance to build a sustainable medical community. We're very fortunate in this country to have the most advanced health care in the world and therefore, uh, you know, we are in the best position of any country in the world uh, when it comes to helping other countries develop sustainable health care infrastructures. Ninety percent of what most docs do can be done by a mid-level provider, like a nurse practitioner or a specially trained PA. There's another 10 to 20 percent of what we do that can't be done by them that really needs our expertise. Technology actually can be the answer. So if we have a combination of education through distant education via the telemedicine or teleconferencing, you can start training people like that to go out and give that health care. I'm doing a project to try to encourage the use of telemedicine. Uh, we have a telemed unit down here. And what I do is I set up consultations between doctors and patients here in Belize and uh, specialist doctors in the States. Positive changes are being made around the world through a network of volunteers and advancements in technology, educating students and providing critical medical services and supplies to people living in areas of need are some of the methods proving to be successful. To see these organizations do work that you know, that I see happening here in Belize and the technology that they've uh, shown me today where you're essentially logged on to have uh, consultations with physicians and nurse, nurses and nurse practitioners back in the U.S. to go back and forth to use this medium for teaching, to use this medium for consultations, to have a um, radiology chart read, it's tremendous. What Interval have become for us is um, not a, a crutch, not a, 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 an aid from time to time um, that we somehow rely upon. What they've become for us is an integral component in building the capacity of the Belizean health system to be able to sustain itself for the future. Interval is a Rochester, New York community nonprofit organization whose volunteers' actions impact the lives of our community, nation, and the world by serving others. By creating a bridge between local hospitals and medical professionals in other countries, Interval is making a difference in people's lives around the globe. Interval also works to recover and redistribute medical supplies and equipment to areas of the world that need it most. The central core and mission of Interval is really to teach others to give, to give back. And if we can learn to do that, if we can teach the next generation, then we're in pretty good shape because they'll teach the next generation and the next generation will be self-sustaining. I think that it's something that really works. I think it's a way that we can directly uh, impact other people's lives. It's a way that we can affect uh, positively health care in other countries. It's a social sort of benefit. The idea being that you can take something 
that's not useful elsewhere and recycle it. That's one part of it. The second part is you can have people volunteer and do some really good service overseas and produce a benefit there. Each year, through the hearts and hands of its volunteers, the world is touched by Interval's mission and the programs it has developed. We had this patient and she came to me and she said, you know, I, I have this problem with my heart. They told me that I need to get a valve fix. So I encouraged her to come and see the, the doctors that were coming from Interval and the cardiologist was there. I had a um, mitral valve stenosis. It had to be an open heart surgery and uh, it is a success now. I'm feeling good. I can just get up and go. I don't have to think about all my heart. Interval's Volunteer Medical Professionals Program helps those in need by partnering with local primary care clinics and hospitals to facilitate medical consultation and treatment in areas where access to care is limited. What we tried to do was put groups of uh, doctors and nurses who work together from Rochester to go on a trip together to provide health care to those in need. I started volunteering with Interval back in the, in the 90s. It's just so good to to know that you've done um, some people that, that don't have access to uh, good medical care uh, a service you know, and make their lives better. Because a lot of uh, nurses, physicians, or other type of technicians, whatever, cannot give of their time as far as leaving and traveling. And so we have telehealth hookups where we are linked into police right now, where physicians or nurses, teachers, or whatever from Rochester can link to that hospital and be able to give consults to patients to be able to get, you know, provide education for nurses and physicians. Interval's Recovery of Unused Medical Supplies Program, also known as RUMS, actively recycles up to four tons of medical supplies each week and distributes to more than 17 local humane societies, six local school districts, and over 75 hospitals and clinics worldwide. Every hospital has a problem with waste, so there's a lot of things that we throw away. And I've been a nurse working in a hospital for the last 30 plus years. And one of the hardest things is, is to constantly throw things in a garbage can that you know that probably could be used somewhere else. We're bringing used but functioning medical equipment that's dated by our technology into the third world where they have nothing. Taking its efforts one step further, Interval's Friends Across Borders program actually helps shape communities and the people that live in them by supporting local schools as well as providing supplies for area children. The program also creates and offers opportunities for civic engagement through ongoing volunteer activities, reinforcing the idea of teaching through doing. Friends Across Borders um, really uh, was given birth to out of um, our recycling program, where our volunteers who are from the community, high school and college kids, wanted to do more and they wanted to have programs of their own where they can get involved and get immersed in a new culture and overseas. Interval, making a difference in people's lives by providing priceless and critical services that matter. For more information, please visit interval.org.